That ex- I've never heard of that. Let's get it on the wax. That's All right, we're putting it on wax. I don't think people ever say turn on the wax like I just did. Turn on the wax. Putting it on wax this we're putting episode. This, yeah, we're putting it on wax. Welcome to the cavalry, everybody. Oh, I'm excited. You want to know why I'm excited, Johnny? Because you have a good topic? I got good topics, I think. Oh. At least I the, the kind of topics I enjoy. So we'll see. But uh, I'm calling my shop. I'm in a good mood. Uh, no good, stupid good. guest. That's right. No, us dumb down. Guest. no, no bloated to pretending to care what they think and That's right. you know, having to listen to them over. You know what I mean? Like, no, this is just the meat and potatoes, <laughs> the good stuff. Right. Just the quality. You know, it's funny is uh, my brother called me today because he was listening to uh, last week. I don't know if we have a buffer episode. The one with Mike. Is that our yeah, last yeah. one? No, no. If you're again, this is like me trying to do the time cop thing. But if you're listening to this, there was one in between. So two weeks oh, okay. ago. So, yeah, it was like, hey, this guy, Mike, what's his deal? He's like, seems super angry. He's like, I'm not even done with the episode. Does he like stay angry the whole time? Like he just needs to like, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, he wants people to like wave at him that are wearing biking gear, but he's not wearing it. Like, calm oh, down. This, this <laughs> is so great. Oh, that is exactly the right reaction to my. <laughs> Why is he so angry? He's like, he's so angry. I was like, well, he didn't seem like I get it, but I was like, he, I think I wonder if you listen to it, if he seems angrier than he is, because when we were recording it, I'm looking at him smiling. Right. You can't hear it. No, you can't hear it. You know, some people you can hear the smile in their voice. That is not true with Mike. <laughs> but like, it's interesting. So that that's interesting. You say that because like I I know him. You didn't know him. I didn't know him at all. Yeah. So like, I know that it's all you know. That's just his kind of. He's like Oscar the Grouch or whatever, and uh, it makes me laugh. But yeah, like I used to say this about Mike, that he has no like. Um, get to know you personality you know what i mean like when when you or i or any other normal people meet a neighbor for the first time or like see a crossing guard or whatever you you put on a little bit of a like say you don't do anything super weird you don't make like a joke about a kid drowning in the pool or something you know what i mean like you like do a little bit of uh get to know you talk a little get to know you humor feeling it out Mike goes right for, I mean, there's just one, he has one speed, you know, and he'll go right into the darkest, craziest, just the first time he meets people. And then he gets mad if they take it the wrong way. So that's that's Mike. But Heidi loves, it's funny because my wife, my my brother was worried about. Sorry, it it glitched up there for a second, but um, Heidi uh, loves him. I'm I'm always t- talking, sh- you know, I, because that's our relationship. We make fun of each other a lot. And uh-huh. I'm always making fun of him to her. And she said, why are you so mean to Mike? Why are you so mean to Mike all the time? <laughs> Mike is great. And I'm like, I don't That's He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully uh, mm-hmm. your brother listens to the rest of the episode. And uh, I don't know. Doesn't get grows to love him to. I, I don't know if he'll love him, but uh, maybe he'll come to understand him a little bit. Mike like wears on you after a while and then like works his way into your hearts and minds. So <laughs> it might take a few more episodes <laughs> for the well. listeners to understand Mike. But anyway, that, but see I'll, I'll this week, we don't have that problem. Yeah. So any exciting news to report? For pre-show banner. Well, it's been pretty uh, eventful. We re- survived this uh, heat wave apocalypse. Uh, it was 115 degrees in Portland, Oregon. Uh, on well, let's see. Like you said, you're listening to this. This is later, but whenever that was for you guys, 115 degrees is hotter than it's ever been in wow. like Los Angeles. It's hotter than it's ever in the history of like Dallas. It's never been 115 degrees. You know what I mean? Uh, the only other like major cities has ever gotten to 115 is like Phoenix and um, there was one other one I can't remember, but in Vegas. But like 
it's insane. It's crazy. And so I was so over, like I was dreading it and I was like, like disaster prepping. (laughs) I I had to buy an air conditioner off a Craigslist. Like I got one, a wall unit. And then of course the other one I ordered wasn't going to come in time. So I panic bought one, uh, off a Craigslist way out of town and had to go pick it up. Same days. But we, it was fine. It? Huh? How far did you have to go? Uh, like 45 minutes uh, east. But like, you know, then what? But then when it's so it was like you're dreading it the whole time. But that's the worst part is knowing it's it's going to be hot. and You're going to be miserable because then when you're actually in it, you're like, oh, it's hot. You know, <laughs> but like, yeah. If you have an air conditioner, I don't know. It's not that. It's like it was. You can't really cool the whole house down, but it's like it was very Just survivable. Just the air conditioner. Yeah, it was pretty much fine. So uh, I hyped it up in my mind. I thought we were all gonna die, but it, it ended up being fine. But it is frustrating because like that's part of the reason why I left LA. Like I got sick of the heat and the fires and stuff, and yeah. you know, and then you get up to Portland and it's like the exact same thing. So it followed. I you. don't know. It follows me follows me wherever i go but uh we survived so what can i say so what has it been now what is it like the temperature now oh now it's like it was 90 something today and then it's gonna be like keep i don't know 90 80s gets down into the 80s next week and more like reason so you're through it you're through it yeah we're through the heat dome that's what they call it they keep inventing uh new weather phrases that i've never heard of before but then it's like they try to make it seem reasonable, you know. It's like, oh, it's gonna be 115 degrees in Portland. It's never been that hot, ever, not even close. But it's because of the heat dome. Oh, it's just the heat dome. Yeah, I forgot they're about trying that to heat tr- dome. They're trying to be trending. Heat, yeah, hashtag heat dome. <laughs> hashtag heat dome. Buy your Sound heat off dome below. shirts. <laughs> yeah. Get your heat dome merch. <laughs> I survived the heat dome in 2021. But yeah, so uh, I never heard of. If anyone knew about heat domes before this, congrats on that. I'm pretty sure they made it up like right before this happened, just to make people feel more uh, calm about the whole thing. No, oh. it's kind of like El Nino just came out. Remember when El Nino kind of just came out of nowhere? I'm sure that's yeah. been around for a long time, but they only started talking about it like in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you hear about El Nino all the time, so. We should start inventing some weather phrases, you know? Yeah, what can we name? I don't know. We'll, th- we'll work on it. Some cavalry, yeah. cavalry themed weather. Yeah, we we'll get some brand. buzz for the show. That's right. <laughs> Hurricane cavalry. Hurricane cavalry. Everyone will be calling it the Hurricane Calvary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We should. We should petition to get a hurricane named after the the show. Because nobody wants, that's one of those things, nobody wants it, like, you know, Hurricane yeah. Andrew. There was a Hurricane Andrew, it was devastating for the Miami area, you know, besmirched my name, so we'll, we'll go oh, Hurricane Cavalry. What about you? Any big news up there in Madison? How's the weather there? Let's do no, weather talk. fine. Well, here, okay, so I did my, I did my triathlon. Oh, oh yeah, we're very, very in the lead. I did my travel on Saturday. I don't know if I told you this, but like less than a week before I called my sister in Omaha and I was like, Hey, I'm doing this, you know, triathlon. If you want to sign up, whatever. And she was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm going to bring three of my kids. We're going to come up. Cause it's like, you know, it's like a seven and a half hour drive. So she signed up, she signed up her niece, uh, my niece, her daughter, her daughter. And that's uh, a senior in high school. They're going to be a senior in high school and uh, and then brought the two kids, you know, my kids age to hang out. And so me, my niece and Carrie, uh, my sister, did this triathlon. And it was great, except uh, the swimming. I trained zero for the swimming or the biking. Uh, the biking was fine. I did like one biking, you know, that week. And I was like, yeah, I know how to ride a bike. Come on. Everyone knows how to ride a bike. So... Uh, but the swimming was terrifying because it was like, you know, it was like, well, this was in a quarry, not even quite a lake, but it was like very scary. And my brother was like telling me, yeah, if you, you, you know, you might panic because there's all these people around, everyone's swimming. You just got to figure out a way to calm yourself down, just float on your back or whatever. I did probably 85% of the swimming on my back 
Just how like old ladies relax in pools, just kind of pushing. I wasn't doing the backstroke. I wasn't even like, I just kind of was like pushing myself with my arms while I was on my back. But was it because you were scared or because you were tired? I started by doing the freestyle. And after, you know, I don't know, almost a minute, I was like, why am I breathing weird? I don't like it was just like I it was like I forgot how to breathe. Like I was taking a huge breath every time I would turn my head. And it was like every single stroke. So I was yeah. like, I'm breathing way too much. I don't uh -huh. breathe like this. So I'm going to like make myself hyperventilate accidentally. And then when I couldn't touch the bottom, I was like, oh, I got a long. And I was like, I got a long ways to go. I should probably <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Just take it. Easy. Wait, when you couldn't touch the bottom, isn't that like three strokes out? Uh, yeah, it's pretty, yeah it was within the first minute yeah it was within the first minute <laughs> and you know what's you know what's even funny i didn't even realize this was funny till i told my wife and she started laughing once i got near the end i could touch so i was just walking but i was pretending i was <laughs> swimming by doing my arms so they would think i was swimming <laughs> but well, i was walking is it cheating to uh no i mean no no, no. not at all I but you just walk. didn't want people to think like yeah that, that yeah. tall guy's just walking <laughs> that would yeah. be funny if you like like terminator style just walked the whole like came <laughs> out from under the water and like your head just slowly comes yeah. up out of the water you clearly you, and you have seaweed on your face and stuff <laughs> and i don't even take it off i just keep going with seaweed on my head <laughs> <laughs> no that swimming i think would be that's funny because i think that would be my strongest of the three. Oh, really I probably i'm probably swimmer? a better swimmer definitely better than a runner running would be the worst of of them i'd rather bike or swim than run but oh, man. uh i know what you mean though about like when people are around you swimming it can be kind of if you get one person kicking you or touching yeah. you like oh, I'm gonna drown! <laughs> you know. Just immediately, like someone pulls on you just a little bit, and you're yeah. out in like open water, like not in a pool. That is a very disconcerting. But I do. I like imagining you getting out, and like, like if it, I'm assuming, like if you did it, and like you were thinking, like of course they weren't gonna have it so deep we couldn't touch. And then all of a sudden you can't touch and you just alert the other racers, like guys, go back! You can't touch out here. Go back! It's getting, it gets really deep about, it's you know, super I, don't know. Deep. I can't touch even, I'm going to go down and see how deep. Oh my God. <laughs> it's at least eight feet. Go back. It's eight feet. And it's all slimy down there. Go back. Oh, go I back. touched the kelp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, so what, what, it wasn't a lake. It was like a, a pond. It was a quarry. It was like, a it quarry. was like a, it was okay. like a small, yeah. We, I, yeah. We've gone swimming there. I mean, it's like a, you know, natural thing, but, uh, but I mean, we're swimming around the whole border of it, and it was far. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, swimming is Oof. exhausting. It definitely is like. I think I talked about how I felt dizzy when I went to my buddy Connor's lake house just to like swim out to the dock and back, just to like be like, oh, I should probably swim at some point. And I got like nauseous, sick, thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, this is not good. And so, and I did, when I got out of the water, I did feel dizzy, but I just kind of went really slow and just kind of took my time getting to the bike and it went away by the time I was on the bike. I admire you, your, um, I don't know what it, your lack of, I don't know what this would be. Uh, Preparation? Self-awareness. Yeah. Just oh. to be like, okay, I tried swimming out to a dock <laughs> and I almost threw up. Let's go ahead and do a race. A really long. Well, no, the thing was, I had race. already paid and signed up for the race and was a week away. And I was like, well, let's just see what this uh, swimming that I'm committed to is all about. No, it is funny. It's like swimming and riding a bike are probably two things people underestimate how hard can be, you know, because it like literally the phrase like, oh, it's like riding a bike. Like you can't, you know, can't forget. So like yeah. everyone knows how to do it and everyone knows how to swim. But like swimming, especially, can be, can be tough, and uh, and like around other people, I I get that part. That part, I I could see the panic of like if someone kicked me when you're really tired too, yeah. and you're like breathing, you're already breathing weird. Yeah, and someone kicks you and in, in the head, water in your nose or something, you're like, call the coast guard. <laughs> yeah. 
You want to know what's funny? Get the chopper. I'm ready for that rope. Send down the ladder. Send the rope Save ladder. Me. I did have, I had, uh, I had, because they have like, you know, lifeguards or whatever in ki kayaks. I had, I could tell they were eyeing me because I was the only guy. There's a lot of people on their back. Well, because you look dead because you're just floating on your back. We got a floater. <laughs> They're like pulling at you with a net. Then I signed up for, uh, you know, I said, oh, this is my first triathlon. So I got thrown in the elite or the novice. So we were yeah. like the first wave going out. And so we all had this same colored swim cap. And there was not, there were not very many neon green swim caps getting out after me. Wait, was, uh, you were, they put, they put different color swim caps on you. Yeah, like you're a novice then they put are? like male, well, just different categories. Like, you know, your oh, novice okay. is, and then there's like 35 to 45 female, you know, oh, I see. 40 I see, to I see. 45 male, whatever. It's, so it's kind of like karate with belts. Yeah. 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 So they had like the Clydesdale, belt. which is like huge people, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they had like red. They were like everyone that had Wait, a red what? cap was like huge. Like jacked or just like. Like jacked. Heavy yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Like that's an insensitive term for uh, heavy people. Yeah. All right. You guys, you guys are in the Buffalo group. <laughs> You go ahead and stampede this way. All right, cows, you guys are going to be leaving at 742. <laughs> if you want to just float, float over there. We know you like floating. Uh, so. Yeah, it went well. You know That's what's funny great. is I, so I left my, uh, my niece killed. Like she, you know, she killed it. She did the swim. She's on the swim team. So she like was, did great. She was on the biking. And like the biking, you go out a, half the way and then you go back. So you're going, you know, this, it's just a line and back. And I yelled, you know, her name's Grace. So I'd be like, hey, Grace. Or I'd like to say, Grace, because I knew she was ahead of me. So when I saw people coming back, I thought it was her. I would yell yeah, that. Yeah. And I, I kept seeing who I thought was her going by. So they said, Grace, to like four people. And none of them were her, apparently. But I did see. Uh, oh, and so I finished the whole thing with her like i didn't see her the whole race and then within the last probably house length before the finish line we met up and finished together but it's only because she uh she took a wrong turn like she on the race she finished you're supposed to do two laps on the running and she went to the finish line and then she realized oh i have another lap so she had to like go back out and then run a lap so that's the only reason i caught uh, up. okay so you ended up catching up to her because she didn't yeah. follow directions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See, part of the triathlon. People forget that's part of it. You know, being able to follow the map. It's swimming, biking, running, and following directions. <laughs> and listening to uh, Siri. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Do you get any sort of like uh, trophy or medal or what's? Yeah, what's, yeah. You, you know, get a award. medal that has a bottle opener on it. <laughs> pretty sweet. <laughs> pretty sweet. <laughs> that's exciting so now i'm clicking now i've got two medals my my 20k and my triathlon oh my gosh you're gonna fill up the case i know do you have plans to do another one no uh, i mean i in the future yeah it was fun i'll do that same one next year oh, yeah. i mean i'm not signed future. up for another one not in the past i don't mean well, i just mean i'm not signed up <laughs> yeah you know no, what i want to no. do i want to do one of those tough mutters you those look them. fun to me. Yeah. 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 Those look really fun. Uh, they sound fun, but then my brother explained how like they have like just, you just get electrocuted and shit. Like it doesn't seem. What? Some of the obstacles are like, yeah, you got to climb under these wires that are just live wires that they zing what you the and you touch them because they're electric. What? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like you slip and slide, like you climb up a muddy hill and you slide That's one down of them. and they you got to swim under a wall in ice water. They're constantly adding ice. So it's like freezing water and you have to go. You have to get fully submerged to go under the wall to get out. Oh. Like some of them are like, oh, I don't know. It's I don't know that it'll be fun. More they're like they're just actually torturing you. <laughs> yeah. <And> you're <laughs> we tell you a secret and then we electrocute your balls. And if you tell us what the secret was. And we ask you, and you, if you give it up, you lose. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> we start peeling your fingernails back one by one. 
Yeah, it's the and Tough Mudder. It's a Tough Mudder. <laughs> the CIA <laughs> runs it. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm out on that. I did this thing once. It was like, I can't remember what it was called, but you go, it was like a scavenger hunt type race. So you would run, it was in the city. It was like an urban thing in Seattle. And then you would go to like different stores and you'd, and every time you'd go into a place, you, they would tell you what you had to do. So it was like 10 burpees or whatever. And you'd get like, you'd have to, f- I don't know, you'd run around the neighborhood and, and then oh, they had like fun. little obstacle things. Yeah. Like slides and climbing up stuff. It was, it was fun. And then you'd like go get beers afterward. It was like, that was pretty fun. I'd like to find something like that. I would do that again, but. Oh, that's cool. Where was that? In Portland? That was in Seattle. That was in Seattle years oh. ago uh, in like the Green Lake area. Uh, huh. And uh, yeah, that was, I did my friend Sean Stoddard showed me that. I did it once though. Never again. <laughs> I should have done it again. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm I'm ready to start getting back in the like fitness thing. Uh, what we walked by, I want to do like classes. I think I, I think I'd be good in a class. You know, like we doing know, what? things are opening. Like karate. Up. Yeah, karate. <laughs> huh? start- I think I'm gonna start. Now that the pandemic's over, I'm gonna take karate. <laughs> you know what? That was the hardest part of the pandemic, is that I wasn't able to start karate. Not that I like I loved karate before and I missed it. I was just like I was about to start karate and I couldn't and that was really no. bothering me. And now I just have no excuse. I need to get out there and start karate. What's the first belt? Is it green belt? Is that the yellow belt? I don't know. I assume I assume white. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm probably. Wrong. Like you work your way white to black. So you would think yeah, yeah. white would be the beginner belt. My gi. I gotta get a good gi. Yeah, you got to get a good gi. Man, what if I get really good at karate? What I'll be I... so proud of you. I will be so proud of you. That'll <laughs> give us just so much pre-show banter. What if I, that's all I talk about? You're like, God, again with the fucking karate talk. <laughs> Enough about your gi. Jeez. <laughs> you just telling stories. I'm just beating the shit out of six-year-olds. <laughs> In a, in a strip mall karate class. Dude, there can't be a big market for, like, adult beginners of karate. Because now everybody wants to do, like, you know, MMA. boxing, MMA. Yeah. Uh. Like they figured it out. That's the thing about MMA. It started out like they were going to figure out which fighting style is the best against which other one. But then they just figured out whatever they do, that's it. Like, that's – they let them do whatever they want. So whatever that's turned into now, uh. I don't watch it really, but, like, that shit that they're doing in that octic that's the most efficient way to beat somebody up. <laughs> they did the experiment, and it's not karate. You don't see people doing, you know, uh, yeah. chops on the yeah. back of their necks and knocking them unconscious. Uh. <laughs> I wish it was. It would be way better if, like, Bruce Lee was winning, like, UFC stuff, but <laughs> it's just not happening. Sorry, karate people. It's a booty boot camp. Yeah, Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> Taibo. Taibo is the most. They actually outlawed Taibo because it's too good. It's too uh. easy to win if you use Taibo. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you, man. Uh, you know, you know what's funny? You brought that up uh, because they're in. Uh, uh, maybe this is it's too late for you the olympics but uh the maybe your niece one day they doing the olympic trials in eugene here in oregon uh at university of oregon yeah. stadium and my neighbor went he's a big track and field fan and uh which is funny in oregon th- that actually exists like people are like are like know about the track like like they watch track like it's like football or something you know like they like you know you watch track once every four years at the Olympics yeah. like a normal person, these guys there are people who like are into it, so he went down it's like it's football to them yeah exactly or like wow. to you I don't know like it's uh, <laughs> Zelda, but so <laughs> yeah. he he went down as a uh, to Eugene as 115 degrees outdoor stadium they, this guy goes down to um, my neighbor to watch the track and field sit in that heat it's crazy oh my god but. I felt horrible. There was apparently there's some athlete, 
you know, you train your whole life for this. You go to the Olympics. You get down there on that field, and then he's, I don't know if he's running, jumping, what, passes out to the do the heat. God. Just gone. I mean, he's not dead, but just passed out. And then and then after that, they suspended everything for a while and then and then brought it back at night. But I'm like, think if that's you, you know, your whole life, and here's your shot, and then just this this heat dome comes, and you <laughs> pass out. <laughs> And you wake up, you're like, wait, what happened? Is it over? Yeah, man, you lost. Did I, I make the cut? What happened? You probably, yeah, I mean, you got, you can try again in like four years, but you might be too old by then. So, sorry, oh, bro. God. I don't know. Maybe he got to try again. I'm not sure how it works, but <laughs> <laughs> you can do wow. triathlons with you and get a, and get a bottle opener medal. Yeah, I think I'm going to make the Olympics. Maybe. The, do they uh, have an event where you just. <laughs> Lay on your back in the water and push. I don't, I don't even put my arms above yeah. my head. I'm just like pushing. Do they have an event where it's like, first one who can tell that you can't touch anymore? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe the Olympic medals have bottle openers on the back of them. That'd be pretty cool to have like a Olympic gold medal at a bar and popping open some Bud Lights. Yeah, man. You get a coupon in your bag and your registration yeah. bag for a, get a beer drink a ticket local tavern yeah <laughs> did they give drink tickets yeah you get one That's free fun. beer at some you know whatever bars right there well yeah. i don't know man i'm proud of you that's pretty good triathlon oh, thanks man i'm a it's triathlete scary. Now. you're a triathlete that's how i'm gonna refer to you oh but this is what i was gonna say my brother signed up for the chicago triathlon this was years ago my two brothers luke and scott signed up for the i don't know if he likes he tells this story so i feel like i could tell the story but uh and it's like you know it's the chicago triathlon so it's it's ex, it's expensive whatever so he's my brother's scott is swimming luke's swimming whatever luke didn't find out this happened until he finished but <laughs> scott's swimming and you like you start the swimming part by swimming along a dock and then at the end of the dock, you know, you just you go and you do the loop or whatever. And when he got to the end of the dock, he kind of like looked up and there was a guy like, a, you know, a safety guy running the thing. And it was like it was just looked at him. I was like, hey, man, you want to get out? And my brother was like, yeah. <laughs> so he just got out and quit. And he's like, I only I only did because he offered like I was like, I, I just couldn't turn it down. I was like, yeah, if he didn't offer, I probably would have ran the whole travel line. But it was like. That's it was so, so miserable. I was just like, oh, God, yeah, it would be dead out. Sure. Thank you for offering. <laughs> so he just quit. <laughs> the heart of a champion. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's like that guy was like uh, Satan, you know, like the temptation. Exactly. Like offering the apple, you know, hey, you want to quit? I'm going to quit. It'll feel so good. If one of those kayak people said that to me, I might. I don't know. They're like eating a (laughs) cheesesteak. I got two of these. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not that hungry. (laughs) You want to get in and have one? (laughs) Crazy. Well, what do you think? I'm ready to go. Pre-show banter? Great pre-show banter. Real fitness theme. Yeah. Well, Um, let's hear yours. What do you need backup on? I got my karate hands ready. All right. Oh, this is I'm coming out hot. Okay, Weird. so I'm going to say this very clearly. Models, you know, like run whatever clothing models should be ugly. <laughs> now, models traditionally very attractive. It's always the most beautiful people. And you're like, oh, they they if I get a beautiful person to wear my shirts, then people want to buy my shirts. Right. Yeah. This is completely backward. I was thinking about this today. It's completely backwards. If you want to show me that your clothing makes people look good, mm-hmm. show because like a beautiful person, like uh, I don't know who the <laughs> I was about to say Claudia Schiffer. That was I, I can only think of Cindy Crawford. <laughs> Wasn't she a model? I don't how know any old, other model. How old are we? Who Kathy are... Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is so sad cindy crawford okay okay, yeah okay kathy ireland now imagine she can make clothes from like target look great you know she make anything's gonna look good on kathy ireland 
but an ugly person looks ugly, right? So the challenge is, is if you can get the ugly person to look good wearing your stuff, then that shows that your stuff actually will elevate. Because I don't care if, like, if I'm going to buy a shirt, right? I don't care if it looks good on uh, <laughs> Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> I was trying to think of a uh, David Hasselhoff. You know, right. these guys are stunners, okay? <laughs> But I need to know that it can make an ugly person look better because I'm trying to look better. You know, I'm trying to improve my current. So I want to look I want clothes that make that elevate me, not just okay. make a beautiful person look beautiful. You know, duh. Okay. Anyone can do that. So models should be ugly people. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> the only thing is you I feel like with that logic, you would have to show a before and after yeah you oh, yeah. have to be like here's the ugly person look at right. how ugly they are now here's them in our jumper you know well whatever. you could really ugly them up too like you could like make sure their worst their least flattering picture you know like a stain like gravy stains on the shirt and and uh you know bad lighting and you on know you before could, picture yeah and their before picture for sure yeah and then in the after picture you really make them look great you know, like a, like the makeover thing they used to do on like daytime talk shows or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, like that's more impressive to me. You know, that's doing some work <laughs> because if like I see if they're like try to sell you like bathing suits or something for men and they're like, look how great these bathing suits look. It's like it's not the bathing suit. It's this freaking, uh, you know, six pack guy. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Rock Hudson fella. <laughs> Who looks incredible, you know. Our he, he, podcast is timeless. <laughs> 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 it is kind of weird we could not think of modern supermodels. Tyra Banks. Oh, that's cut, getting a little uh, closer. Kate, Kate Upton. Kate Upton, okay. But I feel like even she's out of the game. I, I don't know oh, who's, like, the current. I don't know. But the Chrissy Teigen, there you go. But that I only know her from, like, Twitter controversy. Yeah, I didn't even know she was a model. There you go. But okay, so you can see what I'm saying, right? Like Yes. And so other, you would want like so you would so let's say you are you got your own line. Let's right. say you and Heidi come out with, you know, the brand. The brand. And you're like, all right, we gotta we gotta get this out there. Our own brand you, of karate geese. Karate geese. You would you would hire ugly people. Let's say let's say that the girl remember a league of their own? The girl yeah. that's like John Lovitz is like, oh, I forget her name, like Martha or so. I don't know, but she's like. Is she f one of the famous? I forget the movie, but like, uh, is it like Rosie O'Donnell or something? No, no. It's like oh, the girl movie. that's like, her character is probably called Ugly Girl or something. Uh, okay. Like yeah, her dad's yeah. like, she's so good. Like, she's really good at baseball, but she's hideous. And they, yeah. they don't want her in the league because it's all about, oh, come see these beautiful women play baseball. Uh, it's bad but for She's marketing. actually good, but she's terrible she's super ugly yeah so you can't picture her that's no but i'd hire this based is a on very your description you'd what i would hire her based on your description though that she's ugly yeah because let me tell you why so now you're saying yeah but andrew y these other companies they're not going to like go along with this because they're going to continue the traditional model and then your clothes are going to look stupid so you're like only ugly people. Well, guess what? There's a lot of ugly people in America. Okay, representation matters. You know, because it's like there's a big movement there for plus size models, and that's been incredibly successful because there's a lot of plus size people right. in this country. Well, there's a lot, a lot of ugly people too. They only hire beautiful plus size models. They don't hire ugly plus size people. You know, so I'm taking yeah, but... it out a step further, and because like like for me. Like, let's say it's just <laughs> dudes shirts. OK, I'm going to sell a line of just men's T-shirts, just dudes shirts. OK, just dudes wearing shirts. If I see a guy who looks like <laughs> Cary Grant wearing uh -huh. a shirt, I'm going to go. I don't know that that's going to look. You know, what I mean, that's him. It looks like, like, yeah, I can't pull that off. Yeah. But if I see a dude who looks like me, you know. Wearing like a, give a, an I, example of, uh, uh, of who you could see wearing it where you'd be like. Oh, I oh, can... yeah. Like, uh, who, I, I don't like a famous person. Um, sure. 
No, one of our friends. <laughs> one of our ugly friends. I don't think I'm that ugly. I think I'm like normal looking. You know, I'm I'm talking about actively ugly, because then I go, <laughs> wow, that person I know to be ugly, actually looks great in that shirt. Think how good I would look. But what if they? <laughs> I'm just just being the devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just. I'm just thinking of Heidi here. What if, what if you saw that person and you're like, oh, that fucking guy is fucking ugly. I right. don't want to look ugly. Well, no, that's where you, you, that you, what you said actually makes a lot of sense. You have to show the before photos, I guess. <laughs> on side it's by gonna side. Cost, you're going to be paying double the space in everything. Yeah. Just I guess so. How fucking ugly these people. <laughs> and also, plus size, that, yes, that's a monetary, oh, I am, oh, here we go, mathematically, I'm plus size. But to be like, hey, us <laughs> ugly people, we need fucking to be, right. we want to be. It's uh, a little more subjective. You're yeah. like, I don't know. Like you could you could go to the store and like oh they don't have anything in my size but you never go to the store and go they don't have anything in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. have any clothes for to, to, to distract from the ugliness of my face? And how do you pitch that to like your models? Like okay here's what we're going we're trying a little something a little outside the box. Now we brought you in because we want to show <laughs> yeah. that even fucking gross ugly people. Such as yourself. Well, good. yeah. I mean, you'd have to be a little gentler than that, probably. But, you know, sometimes they do that. Like, I, I think about that in movies, you know, like like you said, in A League of Their Own, they had some yeah. character who was literally <laughs> called the ugly one, who the whole story around their character, she's so ugly, they don't want to let her play baseball, which seems insane. Yeah. But that they got an actress to do that, you know? Yeah. So people want to do it. People want to work. And yeah. this is going to be revolutionary because people will like go and you'll stand out. That's the other thing. Cause all these other, they'll copy us eventually, but all these other clothing companies will still have like, so you'll open up a <laughs> magazine. <laughs> go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is going on with this? But yeah. then you'll realize it'll, you'll go, man, you know what? That shirt actually looks pretty good on them. I would look amazing in this. Yeah. If Come yeah! Good. Wow, this before and after ad for clothing <laughs> looks, well, looks really good. I don't even think. Okay, now I'm I'm double tracking on it. I don't even think you need the before and after because I think that you would have it would be striking. You'd go wow, <laughs> then you you'd go you go. You know what? That actually looks pretty good. You know they they look the clothes look great. You know. And it makes how them look like the best possible version of themselves. And that's what I want for myself, you know? Right. But how would you make it? So let's say you get rid of the before ugly, like, you know, gravy stain. Yeah. How do you. Tell the river, Hey, this is on purpose. This isn't like we couldn't get a pretty person. This is like, well, we are be going for fucking butt ugly. <laughs> no it's no. gonna be obvious because it's not like we're like okay so it it would be harder if you're starting your own clothing line because people are gonna be like oh this is the best model you can get that's sad yeah. you know but this is kind of me pitching this idea to like christian dior or, or uh you know gucci or something like they have to kind of it has to be a big brand to sign on and actually use like ugly people yeah okay but it's like because like you think of like a beautiful person and these models they always and it's, it's so counterintuitive because they get them they don't just get beautiful people they get like the most beautiful people they can find like like by definition a model is like mm. the most beautiful person that they can find right yeah but it, there's no room for improvement. You know, they're already like gorgeous. Your clothes don't make them any better or worse. You know what I mean? Like there's no, no. they look, you know, probably perfect naked. So like your clothes really don't do anything. Right. 
it's the it's the ugly people that your clothes are going to improve upon and you want to show how that that is possible but I, there's <laughs> it's just ugly is like such a yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Take ugly. What about like this? What Even about average? Average, like that's different. Yeah. Because average is like, oh, this person, that's this plain person that's at my level, looks good in that shirt. Okay. What about what about this? What about just a little below average? Because you okay. don't you want to see them, and you want the an average person to think I look better than this person who's a model, but. I think I should wear that shirt because, man, they look – even they look good. That's like the sentence you're going for. You're trying to get people to say to themselves, even they look good in that shirt. Yeah. So how, think how good I'd look in that shirt. Whereas All if right. I see clothes on a model, I go, well, that's model clothes. I'm not going to wear yeah. model clothes, you know. Yeah. See the now. See, now it makes sense. Now it's coming together. Okay. Yeah, sense. no, no. This is good. This is good. We talk, worked it out. I, I'm glad you didn't blindly support me because, you know, I want to make sure this idea before I bring it to the big, mm -hmm. big New York agencies. Uh, agencies, I want to make sure it's bulletproof. So. All right. Well, you got you. You got my seal of approval. OK, good. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of ugly people out there, Johnny, and they have a little bit of money. I don't know if they're the richest. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are very poor. But some of them do have money. OK. And some of them uh, could make some money by modeling. Yeah. Clothes. Providing jobs. To Representation ugly. matters. Yeah. There you go. Okay. What do you need to uh, back up on? All right. So this is one I've, I've run into multiple times. Uh, first off, do you like the Bruno Borat, those type, those movies, those type movies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't even, maybe we've even talked about this. Yeah. I don't know, but like people. I could tell by the way you brought it up, me saying yes was the wrong answer. No, that's, I want you to say yes, but it was yeah. how you said yes. Cause it's, there's people that they can't, they don't give it enough credit. They don't enjoy it. Or they're like, yeah, it's funny, but I just, it's so hard for me to, I just feel bad for the people cause it's so awkward and I feel bad. It's hard. And I think that's not fair. I think it's, I don't think it's fair to Borat and Bruno, you know, the movie to, to cut them short. Those movies are some of the funniest movies ever. Yes. See, I knew and you loved them. Okay. Okay. I, I love them. Anything. Like, I think right. they're, I think they're hilarious. And like, even my, like my, my brother and I think my, my brother and my wife have have this and that's why i think this is this is my topic where i need backup because it's so frustrating because my people that i love watching movies with more than anyone like my brother scott it's hard for it like he he it, it loses points because there's parts where it's hard to watch because people are made a fool on camera that's too bad i don't you know it's hilarious and yeah. no one is innocently you know, no these people are like, oh, yeah, I would get what, you know, when he's like, well, would your baby I want your baby for this photo shoot? Would your baby could it lose like five or six pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five or six pounds. That'd be fine. You could quite right. No, I think like I, these people are doing crazy things. I agree with you. I think that he uh, he shows like, you know, with both those characters and all those movies, like. It, he really shows like a mirror of like the worst of America. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is the, and I think it's uncomfortable sometimes to see it because it's like, it's us, you know, we're, you know, it's not literally us. Like we wouldn't right. say our babies would lose five pounds for a part, but like we, it is our country or whatever. And so it's, and I also, I think it's like, cause he's English. It, it's a little more uncomfortable cause it's like this, guy showing you how shitty your country is in certain yeah, yeah. ways. But did you see the one the um the the one it's not Sasha Baron Cohen but uh, Eric Andre did. I forget what it's called. Oh god, yeah. It was so called funny. Bad Trip. Yes. It's so oh, funny my. and I feel like the one difference is his movie it was a little more showing like the redeeming characters of America, you know, cuz like 
he went there was a scene where they go and it's you know two black guys and they're going into this like redneck country bar total trump central yeah and you're like oh jesus and if it was a sasha baron cohen movie he would have like tried to get the most racist reaction and really put them but instead it was like the opposite they were like so like he did some crazy dive off a thing and broke (laughs) and people were so sweet to him and brought him water and drinks and then they showed and then also what i loved about it is in the end credits they show the um the reveal yeah 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 They let you in on it and then they're and then you can see all the people are just like oh my god you motherfucking like that's so that was so crazy i can't believe you got us so good and all this stuff so you do that one was like probably the one i bet your wife and scott would be like uh, more watchable because it's like i don't know it that one felt as funny and maybe less uncomfortable that movie i was that was the movie i was watching on my phone with earbuds in the hotel bed on our way home from the Gulf Coast when my daughter vomited in the bed. <laughs> and I was laughing so hard. I mean, before she vomited. Yeah. When they wake up, they wake up and their dicks are in a Chinese finger trap together. <laughs> I just, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And they're like going out to people asking them to help. Yes. It, it, it's, it's in. It's insane. It's, it was so funny. But again, I think like they they don't make it was more like they were making themselves the butt of the jokes than the yeah. like, people they were pranking. And so it was kind of genius that way. Not that the the Sasha Baron Cohen ones are genius, too, because th- those are more like satire, I think, like yeah. on commentary on America or whatever. But, yeah, I think both both are great. Both are really funny, obviously, like. So I've never laughed harder at a, in a movie theater than the Borat movie. And then like that bad trip was probably the funniest movie I've seen since the pandemic, at least. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Man. So I, I'm backing you up. I mean, like it's See, fair but game. Even those like, I, I, I mean, this goes back to the Henry Phillips movie and the guy that just does fart jokes. Like I'll watch yeah. a Bruno movie, Borat movie. And I will laugh my dick off. And it's not because, oh, he's shining a mirror to yeah, society. Yeah, yeah. It's because he's no. acting like he's sucking a guy's dick in front of a fortune teller. Well, it works on multiple levels, see? Yes, he gets, he gets everyone, yeah. Right. Um, no, I mean, that's not, no one's laughing because of the mirror shining on. <laughs> that's just like the part that lets him get like a Peabody Award or whatever. Right. But like everyone's laughing. The, what's selling the tickets is the sucking the the dicks of the you know what i mean and like like it's like you know like the in the new one he he like seduce or there's a woman in the movie who seduces rudy giuliani and yeah you got all this political news but it's only funny because it's like this ugly old sad man that thinks he's gonna make it with this like russian news woman you Uh, know (laughs) i mean it was that's funny uh, but like yeah it's like i don't know how no one watches any of that stuff for the actual genius satire. I don't think that sells many tickets. Yeah. Well, good. I feel backed up. Yeah. I feel backed All right. Up. All right. What's your What's your other gem? Oh well. Uh, all right. I don't. Now I think I set this up to be better than it actually is. No, I think that. So we trying to read to our daughter. And uh, You're trying to read your daughter. Yeah, I'm going to use the word trying there because like, I don't know when when do kids start to like it or when do they start to like go more? I want to. I don't know. This. I think it varies from kid to kid. Like my sister loved it. I never liked it. My daughter likes it. My son could take her or leave it. Yeah, but not like at seven months. Right. right. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's just, that's when you're putting the work in. That's when you've you're... only raised three kids. I'm talking to the wrong guy, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so terrible at remembering anything. No, I, I am bad with like the numbers part of it too. But I'm just saying, like, so at seven months, really all she's really interested in and like is like eating the book, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. So we go through the motions, and I read it, but it's like horrible. It's not an interesting story. It's not funny. It's not 
you know, doesn't keep me engaged. It's doing nothing for her. But they, but they write them. They make these books that are like chewing. Literally, they know that the kid's gonna chew on it because they make them <laughs> either hard or like crinkly or mm. like. So they know that's why the book exists is because the kid wants to grab it and chew on it, and then yeah. you have to like pretend like, oh, get them ready. They're gonna love reading, and then eventually they'll. So my, what I want backup in is. Okay, fine. If we're gonna go, if we're gonna do this whole charade and pretend that my daughter is enjoying reading this book and not just uh, eating it, right. <laughs> make the book for adults. The store, the actual <laughs> words, <laughs> so that at least I'm getting something out of it. Because right now I'm getting nothing out of like the rooster says cockadoodle doo, right. the cow says moo. She's getting nothing out of that. I'm getting nothing uh. out of that. So uh, you got like, me. You got me on board. Totally, of course. <laughs> make it like a Tom Clancy novel or something, you know. Yeah. But just yeah. in the crinkle paper, right? <laughs> and just have I, like, just have like five hundred of them, you know. Sell me a whole Tom Clancy novel, and I just every night I'll read the next, you know, whatever five pages. Yeah, I'm totally on board. That's how slow I read books, anyway. You know what I mean? It's about five pages a night, if that. Yeah. So I thought you see the whole time I thought you were going to say the kid wants to eat him anyway, make him out of food. <laughs> I was really bracing myself for it. Now I've, ah, there's a lot of holes. Yeah. And then when you said, just make it for the adults, I was like, Oh, that's so easier to back up than just eating the book. That's so funny. Cause that would be confusing for a child to like, Okay, now it's time to eat the book. <laughs> like, wait, huh? what do we do? Just the most screwed up kindergartner when you finally send like them those, into the world. Yeah, it's like those fruit roll up edible underpants, but it's books because they know. Yeah. That anyway. Yeah, that's. They, you're like you're losing the point of what's sexy about edible underpants. Yeah, I got you some edible underpants and edible books <laughs> and some edible keys. It's like okay, huh? I just, it just sounds like you want to eat. <laughs> also, I got you some Snickers bars. All right, I think you just want to have some. Food. Are you hungry or? I think you're just hungry. Yeah, that'd be great though. Couple of Stephen, you know, Stephen yeah, King, Stephen book King. with a bunch of pictures of beach balls and chickens and shit, just to yeah, kind of yeah, but just sneak in reading. this. Yeah, sneak in the, the even like maybe you could do it like I don't know if it if this the technology exists but like if you could somehow like do like sports articles if you could like digitally update the crinkle book so you could put in new stories as you get like a kindle but like they can grab it and chew on it and stuff yeah while well, you're getting the scores from last yeah team. so i can read you know i don't know uh yeah. fantasy football draft guides that would be great you know what Make a fantasy football draft guide out of <laughs> in like a card book, <laughs> cardboard storybook. You're starting to lose me. You're starting I know, to I know, I know. But for those of you listening at home, a lot of people like fantasy football, Johnny. I, I, you live in America. You're just going to have to deal with it. And it, it, if you made that a fantasy football draft guide uh, with the hard cardboard pages and just put swans and monkeys and stuff on each page, I, that's a bestseller. I'm telling you right now. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm backing you up. Totally. I shouldn't even be giving this idea out for free. This is ridiculous. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> They're gonna be like, yeah, I was just listening to some Calvary pie. I don't remember what it was called, and I, the guy was talking about it. You're gonna make money off of it. Uh, <laughs> hey, I know this is totally untimely because this will come out in two weeks, but. Are the buck aren't the Bucks doing? Do you know what their record is, or if they won a game? <laughs> Isn't it like best of seven, and they win the whole NBA thing, or no? Is that wrong? <laughs> People keep talking about it, and they're like, "Oh, Johnny, you," and I'm always like, "Oh, what are they, what's happening?" Because they know I'm from you know Milwaukee or whatever. Yeah, no. So I they played hear, what three games? I can hear the passion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are in the Eastern Conference semi or Eastern Conference Finals against the uh, Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks. And, and I think won. they're up they're yeah. up two games to one and Atlanta's best player is hurt. So they're in good shape. Yes. Yeah. 
So what happens if we win? Best then you'd go to the then you go to the finals. This is our sports talk radio segment. <laughs> just the most rudimentary <laughs> it's like reading a children's story to you about basketball and then the bucks play the winner of the western conference finals between the if phoenix they're standing Suns behind the three-point line they get three points and the los angeles clippers yeah so i think like uh right now the sun's probably the favorite to come out of the west so you'd play phoenix in the finals if so then it'll be hold. the suns versus the bucks for the basically super bowl for the Super Bowl. That's right. That's right. And best of seven, which is always – that's I don't know if that's like a – okay, so you're not a sports fan. Sometimes, like, I say best of seven, and that's been a conversation with my wife before where it's like, wait, best of seven, what is that? It's like the first team to win four games. Yeah. Yeah. You get that part. That's, that seems interesting that they do it that way because – Wait, that's, that's – The, the play- sport could lose a lot of money by having – four like if it's a sweep if they just if one team wins four right. that's three games they're not getting any money for welcome to the uh the fascinating world of nba reddit the <sighs> games are fixed the commissioner makes a call the rest oh, i see you know what just I mean? to make it go oh along. yeah you're you're in uh you have a lot of friends in this world where they believe that the games are if it's like 3-0 or 2-0 and they're like, boy, this series is going a little fast. They make a couple calls, the old referees and get a couple. Uh, uh. But um, I don't know if that's true. But, yeah, I, th- I like your idea where they should just have to play seven games no matter what. So even if the other team knows they're not going to win, just do some consolation games. Look, guys, we need the revenue. So get out there. This doesn't really matter, but have some fun. All right. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> Nobody's playing to have fun anymore. No, they just play for the money. I like when people say that they're just in it for the money. <laughs> yeah, no shit. They're professional basketball. Players. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think exactly. you do your dumb fucking job? Right. <laughs> you just yeah. repair refrigerators for the money. <laughs> you used to love it. I like when people do it for free for the passion of it. Uh. How many Milwaukee Bucks can you name? Go. Zero. <laughs> I could name I could I could name all the NBA players right Wait, now. all time. All time how many Milwaukee Bucks? Like from any era. I, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar before he was Kareem <laughs> Abdul Jabbar. What you, was his you know old his name? name before he was Kareem Abdul Jabbar? This is a good trivia question. No, you know what? I only know this when I was at because I learned this. On Wednesday at the Mike at the Madison Comedy Club, I had no idea Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was that he had changed his name or that he played for the Bucks. No, but do you know what his name used to be? No, it, it'll uh, ring a bell when you say it. Lou Alcindor, and I knew that because we had a Lou Alcindor rookie card, like it was a very valuable uh, basketball card. Oh, so obviously it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar now, but the, on the card it says Lou Alcindor. It was a rookie card. And then, okay, what about Al McGuire? Or he was a coach? I don't know. Oh, that might be Marquette. I think I'm thinking of Marquette. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. You're out How many mind. bucks can you name? Well, right now, a lot. Yeah, they're, in the, <laughs> they're on TV every freaking night. <laughs> it's national. Well, they're on my TV every night, too, and I can't fucking name them. Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's the, that's the guy. That's your big okay. guy. And then Chris Middleton. It's a good team. You should check them out. They're the home team. I tell you, I only, I only found out there were like years. Oh shoot! You cut out there. Like say that, team. say that again. You cut out for a second. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to say it again. I said I just found out they were an NBA team five years ago. What did you think they were? I don't know. I thought they were maybe the Madison College team or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God! You have a stunning. <laughs> like it's funny. Like some people, are like ah, oh, yeah, I'm not a big sports guy, or whatever. You thought the Milwaukee Bucks were just like a local attraction, like the college team. Like the college, you thought they were the college team, but what yeah. college? You thought they were like the I University know, of Wisconsin. Milwaukee? What? <laughs> I don't know. You're asking old Milwaukee? You didn't even think of. <laughs> Did you think old Milwaukee was the? No, university? I didn't. Say, I didn't say old Milwaukee. I didn't say old Milwaukee. I just you know said what's funny? Milwaukee to play it safe. I probably just heard that because old Milwaukee. 
makes me sick to my st- that is the sickest i've ever been was off of old milwaukee beer in high school i got so <laughs> sick drunk and i don't think you know like all that beer is bad like it's all gross yeah. beer and it tastes this but they're all basically the same when you're at that level yeah but for some reason that one is like especially like poisoned i, I can't even go near it worse than what bush and keystone and oh all. way worse way worse yeah huh. worse than like like the the 40s stuff like the the malt liquor i'd rather drink that than old Man. oh wow There's something about it that scares me now Oof. do you have an alcohol like that is there anything you got ever so sick of that made you sick that you can't drink now no no <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think at one point high life was but now i like high life again like yeah you came around on it yeah yeah i gave it time learn to forgive that's right move on i need to do that to old milwaukee yeah i mean actually that one i I don't like that one uh well good luck to the bucks out there hey uh do do you want to do one more i think we got a minute here Oh, this is an easy one. Yeah, this will okay. just this is I think uh <clears throat> I can't I I don't think you can name a possible topic for a conversation that is more boring for people to discuss than directions. I don't know why people insist on talking about oh what you what route did you how did you get like when I hear people talk about that, I'm just like do you guys just not know each other well or what? I mean, it's, and it's my family. This drive from Omaha to Madison, we've all made yeah. a thousand times. How'd you Why go? Why are we talking about this? Did oh, you I got, take the... And you know what's funny? I don't even know. I just follow my GPS. Right. If they ask, I don't know. I just follow the little car on the screen. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Who cares? It's so, And I, like, I won't have it, but I'll listen to other people have it. And I'm just like, what are what are either of you getting out of this conversation? Is there you want to know what it is? It's ego because everyone believes. So if you're if you're you or me, for the most part, and you no. just use the GPS and you just assume it knows better than I do. Yeah. It its whole life is this. It mm-hmm. studies this every day. It gets real time traffic updates. I'm not going to beat this thing with my knowledge of the back roads. It's just right. I, I, just surrender to it. And yes. so. But other people have ego wrapped up in their direction ability or their <laughs> their their route, and so they want to talk about it. They go, "Oh, you took the the eighty six? Yeah, it can be a trap." About <laughs> you know, so we avoided it. We made sure to take Highway two hundred five and got around. You know, by where the old shell is, and just listening to you pretend you're having that conversation makes me want to leave the room because I'm like, I can't, it's like, now it's not even boring. It's like irritating. I can't well, stand listening to people. I also think it's a generational thing. I don't know if these people you're talking about are older, but like if you had to drive before GPS, that probably was like an interesting discussion, you know, because it's like <laughs> you had, you had to know you are like, you're like, Oh, that is a new way I could go. But you're right. You and I hear that now. And like nothing you can tell me is ever going to change the way I go anywhere. Right. Because I'm just going to follow the stupid machine because it knows more than you. Yes. Yeah. Well, good. You're. you're, I'm backing you up. But yeah. But are those like, do you remember doing? Did you ever have to do gigs before? When I I started, I I had to print out. Yes. Map. Map quest. quest. Yep. Is printing out and stapling map quest yes i remember printing out map so that was when i first started same exact thing uh printing out map quest directions and i have a vivid memory like if you missed a turn you were fucked because yes. <laughs> it only sa- there's no rerouting or right. get back on your route with map quest it's yeah. like you i would take my packet staple together to the gas station and be like where am i where right in directions did i get messed up i remember because i didn't have a smartphone either so i remember pulling into like a Mac- i had my map quest directions i was lost i would pull into the mcdonald's McDonald's was like one of the first places to have free Wi-Fi. So I'd pull into a McDonald's parking lot and pull out my laptop, connect to the Wi-Fi and reroute on MapQuest <laughs> to get where I was going. 
These are the new old man stories. Like it used to be the old man stories was like I unfolded my map and you know figured it yeah. out. And the new old man stories is I pulled into a McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi on my laptop <laughs> to get on MapQuest and figure it out. Yeah, and then you take screen grabs while the map is on your screen. So yeah, you open it up on your passenger seat when you're not on Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I know it was. Uh, and then I would write it. I would handwrite it out. Yeah, 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 but. I'm glad that's so funny. I bet I have like a shoebox because I save all that. I say I not everything, but like I saved a bunch of old shit. I'm sure I have like printed out map quest directions in some shoebox next to, to, to old stuff. gigs. That's funny. Yeah. Now it's funny because you'd want to think like those were all gigs I would never do again, you know, but and now I know I know those routes like the back of my hand. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not need directions anymore. I got yep. the drive to Medford down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. oh, God. Yeah, no. Guys, you don't need to talk about your route, okay? Yeah. Get real. You're, Be vulnerable. You're boring talk about brain something brain. interesting. Yeah, like NBA like players. the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Milwaukee Bucks. You should you should go in like try and do sports small talk. Hey guys, you know you hear about these Milwaukee Bucks? They're like a real NBA team now. <laughs> yeah, oh, and, I guess they, they graduated been a, while. a couple years ago. No more college for those guys. <laughs> trying to show off my newfound knowledge. Right. You think of the Milwaukee Bucks like they're the Mighty Ducks, where they like they started as you know kindergartners, and then it was the same team, and they keep getting like promoted. Right, college right. and now they're in the nba and they made it to the nba <laughs> <laughs> they made it to the, as a team they made it to the nba <laughs> <laughs> uh, well they're playing right now i wonder if they won oh they well. do you you won't know you won't know well, i'll find out know. right now what is the score of the <laughs> milwaukee bucks game the Bucks were subjugated by the Hawks in Game Four of the Conference Finals today. The uh oh. Final score was one hundred ten to eighty-eight. Subjugated. Yeah, we lost eighty-eight to one ten. Oh so my God. Two to two and two or whatever. Yeah. Well. I, you know gonna... what? I bet it was. I bet it was the refs. They were yeah. going too fast. The Bucks were winning too much. <laughs> they didn't too want. Fast. Yeah, they wanted to go seven games. See, the yeah. fix is in. Uh. All right. That's it. That's it. Leave Thanks. a five star review. Join the Patreon. Do you, you have anything you got to plug? Uh, I'm going to be in Missoula, Montana. If any, if we have any listeners in Missoula, Montana, July 11th. July uh, 11th. Go, see, go to my website, get tickets. So for this that. is going to drop on the 12th, correct? <laughs> <laughs> right. I think God so. Damn it! I am so good at this. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm looking at my calendar right now. Hard. My wife will be in L.A. the 15th through the 19th visiting <laughs> friends. Uh, I will be at the Jukebox P uh, Peoria Jukebox Comedy Club the 23rd and 24th. All right, we'll go to Peoria, or if you have a time machine, <laughs> go back and do triathlon. To yesterday. And uh, come see me in Missoula. Okay, that's it. Oh, and check Hi. out the Patreon. Uh, we're going to have a new bonus episode up. Uh, right. or it's already up if you're hearing this, so go to the Patreon yeah. and get it. All right. Thank you for listening to The, the Cavalry. Cavalry.